We praise Him and we glorify Him. As He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers. And in particular on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet ﷺ said, Recite the first ten ayat of Surah Al-Kahf for protection from the, from the fitna of Dajjal. In today's class, we are going to look at those first ten ayat of Surah Al-Kahf. Let us first begin by listening to the surah itself in Arabic. The sheikh who is reciting is an Egyptian. My very dear friend, my beloved brother, Sheikh Ali Barakit. And he died by drowning just a few days before I left Malaysia in the month of July of last year. So we pray that Allah may have mercy on the Sheikh and bless him and grant him Jannah. Recite the first ten ayat of Surah Al-Kahf for protection 
from the jar, from the fitna of the jar. But the first ten ayat end with a dua. Hence, that dua is more important than any other dua when seeking protection from the fitna of the jar. Rabbana atina min ladunka rahma wa hiyyik lana min amrina rashada. O our Lord, our Rabb, grant us from thyself, grant us rahma mercy and open a way for us in our difficulties a way out of our difficulties whenever we are faced with danger in the age of the jal which is this age like for example you traveling by air and you have to go to immigration and you have a beard and your wife have a hijab <laughs> the immigration officer just look at your face change terrorist <laughs> you will get a hard time recite this dua if you have the time, you can go on to recite all ten, all ten ayat of Surah al kahf the beginning. And if you have time after that, then you can recite an ayah of Surah Yasin. Which one? Where's Yasin? وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدَّمْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ Saddan fa'agshaynahum fahum la yubsirun hmm? My wife keeps on reminding me all the time we cited. In addition to this now, we go to the surah itself, the ayat, to see what do they contain that Allah should say, Allah's messenger should direct us to these ten ayat for protection from the job. It begins with the words, Alhamdulillah. And when Allah begins his statement by praising himself, the implication is that to which he now directs attention is a matter of the greatest, the most supreme importance. He begins Surah to Bani Israel like that. Surah to Bani Israel is also known as Surah to Isra. Surah number 17. Subhanallahi asra bi abdihi laylan min al masjid al haram ila al masjid al aqsa ila akhir al ayah. Glory be to him who took his servant by night from this sacred mas masjid to that distant one in Jerusalem. Huh? Meaning that the Isra and Miraj is an event of the supreme importance. Alhamdulillah hmm? alladhi Praise be to Allah Anzala ala abdihi al-kitab Who sent down the kitab on his servant. Yani Muhammad Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam Wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaj Iwaj Crookedness Distortion And did not ordain Did not allow any crookedness Or any distortion to enter Into this book, the Quran <coughs> He's referring now to the crookedness and the distortions which have entered into the previous scriptures. 
the Torah, the Zabur, the Injil, etc. And this Quran has come to set straight everything that they made crooked. لِيُنذِرَ بَأْسًا شَدِيدًا مِنْ لَدُنْ This Quran which has come to set straight everything which was made crooked in the previous scriptures has also come to deliver a tremendous warning a warning of Ba'san Shadida of terrible punishment Milladun from Allah that punishment which comes from Allah begins only when Yawmul Qiyama has commenced and of course we told you Yawmul Qiyama is not 24 hours eh? the day of Qiyama is not 24 hours a day with Allah could be 50,000 years a day with Allah could be 1,000 years so Yawmul Qiyama could be a long period of time it is when Yawmul Qiyama commences that Allah's punishment can begin Hmm? straight from him so this Quran has come to warn of terrible punishment which now awaits those who number one change the word of Allah made it crooked number two those who remain attached to that crookedness despite the fact that this Quran has come to set it straight وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ صَالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا حَسَنًا At the same time that this Qur'an has come to deliver that mother of all warnings of terrible, terrible, terrible punishment for those who do not now come to the straight path that the Qur'an has corrected from the corrupted text of the previous scriptures this Qur'an has come to give good news, glad tidings for those who now believe in this Quran and whose conduct is righteous that for them there is a wonderful reward waiting for them what are those crookedness in the previous scriptures the crookedness is not only in the previous scriptures. When the Quran speak about that this book has nothing crooked, it's talking about crookedness outside the book. And the crookedness outside the crookedness which is outside of the book is first of all in the previous scriptures which were distorted. But it could also be prepare yourself for this. It could also be in fabricated a hadith. My teacher Maulana Fadur Rahman Ansari wanted to do this as a last thing before he died. He said to us, his students, the same work that I have done with the Quran, I want to do that work with the hadith. Because I recognize that there are fabricated a hadith even in Sahih Bukhari. And this is the last work I want to do, to go through the ahadith and sift them. Huh? A great work on the ahadith, and he had already begun. And he had his notes in his library, working on the ahadith, when he died. And after he died, when I went to look for the notes, I couldn't find them. And so this Quran has come to direct attention to the crookedness that has entered into the previous scriptures. How will you know what is crooked in the previous scriptures? How? Ah. Obviously you have to study the previous scriptures. And when you study the previous scriptures, you now have to go to the Qur'an to see where does the Qur'an set straight 
something which looks crooked in the previous scriptures. Example, Riba. And the Torah says that it is haram for an Israelite, today known as a Jew, to lend on interest to another Israelite. That's haram. But it is halal, he can lend on interest to those who are not Jews. That's there in the Torah, up to now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposes that crookedness in the Torah. How does he do it? In the Quran. When you go to the Quran to Surah An Nisa, I think it is verse 160 or 161. And Allah says, well, ach, we, He first of all denounces the Jews for their wicked conduct. For be min al he says, because of the wickedness of the Jews. What wickedness did they do? Wa akhzihim riba. They were taking riba. Riba, the interest on money which was lent on interest. But riba is also a rip off when you rip off someone. Wa akhzihim riba. Wa kad nuhuan. That they were taking riba, even though we had prohibited it for them. So now we know what is there in the Torah, it's false. They changed it with their own hands. In the Quran, Allah speaks of Nabi Lut alayhi salam. We have a book on the back on riba. And that book treats the subject in great detail. But on Lut alayhi salam, he speaks in the Quran of Lut alayhi salam as a righteous prophet of Allah. Now when we go to the Torah, we find that they wrote with their own hands that Lut alayhi salam was given you know, fire water to drink until he got drunk. When I was with the and when he got drunk, then one daughter slept with her father. When I was with the until she was pregnant, and then the other daughter slept with her father till she became pregnant, while the father was drunk. That is not righteous conduct. So that's a lie. That's a falsehood. They did it in order to make the drinking of alcohol halal. But if the Prophet could do it, who is we? A third example that he's engaged in incest. But the Quran says he's a righteous man. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there are many more changes in the scriptures, many more, but I've given you only these three. There are even changes in the ahadith, corrupted ahadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now warns of terrible punishment. And terrible punishment is connected with the signs of the last day, the last Yomul Qiyamah. And those are ten in number. Ten in number. Okay, let me hear them. Bismillah. <laughs> what are the ten? You're looking at me in a strange way. Okay, Imam. Number one. Dajjal. Number two. Gog and Magog. Number three. The return of the son of Mary, not the son of some Punjabi woman in Kadian. Number four. Number four, Dukhan, smoke. Number five, now we're not giving them in the chronological order in which they occur, I remember that. Number five, Dabbatul Ard, 
the beast of the land, the holy land, probably number six. That the sun would rise from the west, number seven, eight, and nine. Three earthquakes, three landslides, the earth opening and swallowing what it swallows, one in the east, one in the west, and one in Arabia. Number 10, a fire would come out of Yemen and drive people to their place of assembly, which is Arafat. So when Allah speaks of punishment, Ba'asam Shadeed, He's talking about punishment which comes out of these 10. And the Prophet has said Dajjal. So we know the punishment is coming from Dajjal. Where will the punishment be located? The Quran at the beginning of Surah Al-Kahf is saying Dajjal is going to attack in every place where they planted an evil seed. Either in the word of Allah, the Torah, the Injil, the Zabur, or the word of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, the Hadith, Wherever you plant an evil seed, once the jar is released, he's eventually going to cause that evil seed to become an evil tree, and no one can cut it down. That's the punishment. And so they change the word of Allah to make riba halal. That riba is going to go under the jar's direction until riba pervades the entire economy and takes control of the whole world. The Prophet warned about it. He said, the time will come when you'll not be able to find a single person, not one, in all of mankind who will not be consuming riba. You heard that? Did you hear that? <laughs> You will not be able to find a single person in all of mankind who will not be consuming riba. And whosoever says he's not consuming riba, verily the dust will reach him, verily the vapor will reach him. Hmm? That is fulfilled today. Why do you think they have the strike in um, Point Fonte? Why do you think you have labor unrest in Trinidad? Why do you think governments all around the world have to impose minimum wage legislation? And now they want sectoral minimum wage. Why? Because the economy has been corrupted by riba. That's why. Number two. Allah prohibited the consumption of intoxicants. He did it in the Quran. He considered it to be evil in the Quran. What evil in the Quran had to be evil before the Quran? Huh? If it's evil in the Quran, it can be good before. <laughs> so it had to have been prohibited in all previous scriptures because evil. The Prophet ﷺ described alcohol as the mother of all evils. We have a booklet at the back entitled The Quranic Method of Curing Alcoholism and Drug Addiction. It's a small booklet. Please not only read it, study it. They changed the word of Allah to make the Prophet drink until he drunk. <laughs> when I was a beloved in Havah. The Jal now takes that evil word, that crooked word, that crooked seed, and cause it to grow until it becomes a tree. And nobody can cut it down. And so alcoholism and drug addiction comes and takes over the whole world. Huh? You understanding now? And when it comes as a big tree, no government can cure it. They cannot arrest it. They can't stop it. It grows only worse and yet worse. Baksan Shadid. Terrible punishment. Number three. They wrote about how their father sleep with his daughters. That is incest. Guess what happened? When they planted that evil seed, the child took it and is now making it grow into an evil tree. 
so that incest is now spreading all over the world. The government of Singapore don't know what to do. It's the model state, Singapore. And yet incest is becoming widespread. I think it was today's newspaper or yesterday. A fellow get how much? 60 years or 20 years? For 48 years? Yeah. For committing incest with his own three-year-old daughters, man? Every time you change the word of truth and corrupt it with something false and this Quran has come to set it straight. Now, Dajjal is going to take that evil seed and cause it to become an evil tree and you ain't going to get away from it unless you are protected by the Quran. Hmm? But the Quran itself goes on to speak about a particular evil seed that was planted, making special mention of it. This Quran has come to warn those who declare of Allah that He fathered a son. Ma lahum bihi min ilm. They have no knowledge of the subject. Wala li abaihim. Their fathers have no knowledge of the subject. Kaburat. Kalimatan. Takhruju min afwahihim. It is a terrible thing that comes out of their mouth when they say this. That Allah fathered a son. And so shirk. Which, which son is this he talking about? The Quran itself explains that the Jews declare that Uzair is Ibn Allah. <laughs> Uzair is the son of God. Uzair in English, Ezra. So the Jews responded to say, you see how the Quran is false? There are no Jews today who say that Ezra is the son of God. None. There is no historical evidence that Jews ever considered Ezra to be the son of God. Jews never had any belief in the son of God. So the Quran is false. Where is the evidence? Until 1947. There was no evidence. And then the Dead Sea Scrolls were located in the caves of Qumran. And they did all that they could to, to conceal those Dead Sea Scrolls for 50 years. It wouldn't come out. But eventually it had to come out. This was a community of Jews. The Essenes. And there was a likelihood that Nabi Isa Islam was connected with this group, the Essenes. And they separated themselves from the rest of the community. They went to live in what I call the Muslim village, far out in the countryside. But they went to live in caves. And they kept their scriptures concealed and protected. And when the caves were discovered, these scriptures were located and they were called the Dead Sea Scrolls. And one of them was entitled, The Son of God. <laughs> and so here is evidence that there were a community of Jews at some time who did have belief in the Son of God, confirming what the Quran is saying. وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودِ الْوَزَيْرِ بْنُ اللَّهِ وَزَيْرِ is the son of God. But the Quran is also referring to the Christians who declare of Nabi Isa alayhi salam that he is the son of Allah. The Quran is saying that this is false. 
they have no knowledge of what they say. And this is an absolutely terrible thing that they are saying. Now, now that the Quran has come to correct that, to set it straight, once this message reaches a Christian, and the heart of that Christian is made to realize and to understand that what is in the Quran is the truth. If he does not accept what is in the Quran as the truth, and he dies like that, then he will face serious, serious predicament over this issue. For a Christian who never reached, realized that what is in the Quran, nobody taught him. His heart was never touched by the truth which is in the Quran. And such a man dies believing in Jesus alayhi salam as the son of God. What is going to be happening to him? This answer came up in the lecture. The Quran answers for such Christians. At the end of Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah, Allah is asking Nabi Isa alayhi salam, did you say to the people, take me and my mother as gods beside Allah. Did you say that? He said, no, I didn't say that. If I said that, you'd know what it is. You know what it is in my heart. I don't know what it is in yours. I never said this. I never said anything other than what you told me to say. Then he goes on to say, if you punish them, and they are your servants. But if you forgive them, then you are the merciful, the forgiving. Now the Quran declares that Jannah is haram for a kafir. Eh? So even Nabi Isa Islam cannot ask for forgiveness for one who dies as a kafir. Eh? Indicating that these people, although they believe worship Nabi um, Allah, uh, Nabi Isa alayhi salam. They worship him and they believe he's the son of God, which is children. Even so, they are not kuffar. They are misguided, they engage in shirk, but not kuffar. Because Nabi Isa alayhi salam, his desire is very plain. If you punish them, they are your servants. But if you forgive them, you are the merciful, the forgiving. Meaning, I hope you will forgive them. And so from this surah, we know now, we have homework to do. If we sit down to this Quran, and we do not go out to the people to tell them what is in the Quran, crap or smoke it back, we would have betrayed the Quran. We would have neglected the Quran. And we would pay a terrible price for having neglected and betrayed the Quran. If we do not exert ourselves to take the message of the Quran out intelligently, with wisdom, with compassion, kindness, in a beautiful way, to those who are following corrupted versions of the truth. If we don't do that, then we will pay the price for it. فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعُ نَفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ إِنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنُ بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ أَسَفَ When you reach out that message to them, some of them, their hearts will be touched. They will immediately recognize that this is the truth. And they will start to draw closer and closer to the truth. Don't write off people on Wednesday from 9 in the morning until 12. Where is Brother Ibrahim? Uh, Rashid Ibrahim? Where he is? I had an uncle in my home. Uncle for Princess Don. This man is a confirmed Kadiani Ahmadi. Pakka. All his life he is firmly committed to the Ahmadiyya movement. He's not a bad man. 
He's a man who lives a righteous life. But intellectually, he was entrenched in the Ahmadiyya belief all his life, 70 something years. And I sat down with him for three hours on Wednesday morning, taking up this subject of Jerusalem in the Quran, Nabi Isa Islam, Dajjal, Gog and Magog. And I could see before my very eyes over three hours that this man was changing. And all I could say was, praise be to Allah. Don't write off people. Hmm? But then there are others. <laughs> yes, there are others whose hearts are not like that. Whether you warn them or you don't warn them, they will never accept. No. Allah has sealed their hearts. Allah has sealed their hearing. Allah has put veils before their eyes. And your heart is weeping. The tears are coming out of your eyes. But they would not accept it. You can be the Prophet himself. The best Mubalik of all to preach the truth. And these are here around you, Abu Lahab, your own uncle. We all love our relatives, don't we? Your auntie, your uncle. You love them, don't you? So it must have pained the Prophet ﷺ that his own uncle would not accept the truth. So Allah's, Allah's Quran now very gently reprimands. He says, why you want to kill yourself with grief? فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعُ نَفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ إِلَّمْ يُؤْمِنُ بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ أَسَفًا Why you want to kill yourself with grief if they don't accept this Qur'an? إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا مَا عَلَىٰ الْعَرْضِ زِينَةً لَهَا I have made the earth beautiful. There is the glitter of the dunya. And the dunya and all the glitters in it are put it there to test them. Are put it there to test them. Lord, I live for you. I'll die for you. I give up everything for you, but not my U.S. visa. That I can't give up. <laughs> not my U.S. visa. I live for you, I'll die for you, but I have to get this house. The only way I can get the house is go to Republic Bank and borrow your money. Hey, I know way. I live for you, I'll die for you, but me, can't, I can't drive a whole car, man. That is beneath my dignity. I have to get a new car. The only way I can get a new car is go and borrow money and interest, either through the front door from the commercial bank or through the back door from the same credit union. I have placed the earth with all its beauty, with all the glitters. Inna ja'alna ma al that it may beautify it. amala to test them, to see which of them is best of in conduct. Who are those who live for me? Who are those who will die for me? And who are those who live for the dunya? And who will die for the dunya? Hmm? Oh, this is what you want? Okay. I will give you 
Allah says in the Quran, I'm going to give you houses with roofs made of silver. And give you staircases made of silver. Take, take, take dunya. <laughs> huh? Because you have nothing to get in the akhirah. So it's a test. Dajjal now comes. This is Surah Al-Kaf warning us. Dajjal now comes to get all of mankind, the hearts of all of mankind, to be wedded to the dunya. And from the time your heart is attached to the dunya, the fear of Allah leaves the heart. Just look at the Asya. Those who created the Asya were pious people. Pious people. Great Muslims who created that organization. Great Muslims. We honor them. We respect them. I dedicated my book, One Jamaat, One Amir, to Haji Ruknuddin, Rahimahullah. His name will remain forever green. This is the man who created the Asya. Over the years, you see what has been happening. The fear of Allah gradually leaves the heart and you end up with a fish market. Who is the author? The Jal. This was our last lecture. Remember the rich man with the two gardens and the poor man who had nothing? Hmm? That is materialism. The Quran is teaching. That is the dunya. And when we were children growing up, you remember we used to sing it? I mean, I know I don't have the voice to sing. Dunya se dil laga kar. Dunya se kya milega. You give your heart to the dunya. What does the dunya have to, to offer you? Ya de khuda ki eja. Give your heart to Allah. Live for Allah. To juku khuda milega. You get Allah Himself, meaning Allah will watch over you. Allah will protect you. Allah will guide you. Allah will put noor in your heart. And when the moment comes for the soul to be taken out, Allah will instruct the angels, take it out gently, gently, gently. Wa لَجَعِلُونَ مَا عَلَيْهَا صَعِيدًا جُرُزًا This dunya which glitters like gold with all its green hills and mountains and the flowers and the raindrops and all of these things plus of course the Toyota Camry وَإِنَّ لَجَعِلُونَ مَا عَلَيْهَا صَعِيدًا جُرُزًا I am going to cause this dunya to become a dust bowl. How will I cause this dunya to become a dust bowl? Reduce everything to dust? The answer is in the last class with the two men, the rich man and the poor man. What happened? Who's answering? That's right. Allah took away the water and then the river dried up. This is what's going to happen. That Allah will cause a way of life to emerge. No, let me rephrase that. Allah will create Gog and Magog. And Gog and Magog will cause a way of life to emerge in which we will hang ourselves with rope that we will wear ourselves but spin. How? The excessive consumption of water, disrespect for water, waste of water, and eventually all the rivers will become dry. Over there in Santa Cruz, they show me 
He said, Brother Imran, when we were children, we used to jump from this bridge. We used to dive in the river. Today, river dry. Hmm? Around uh, Lake Ontario in Canada. The water level in Lake Ontario is going down so much that they have to chart new routes of navigation for ships in Lake Ontario. Hmm? So water, fresh water, not seawater, when you see it becoming less and less, you open your tap, no water. When you see water becoming less and less, scarcer and scarcer, you know you're moving towards the countdown. Hmm? When Allah will cause the whole earth to become a dust bowl, أَمْ حَسِبْتَ أَنَّ أَصْحَابَ الْكَحْفِ وَالرَّكِيمِ كَانُ مِنْ آيَاتِنَا عَجَابًا What happened, O Muhammad, alayhi salatu waslam? Why are you so surprised? Why are you so astonished, O Muhammad, alayhi salatu waslam? Why do you feel so amazed? about this story that I'm narrating to you. They asked the rabbis in Medina, they said, answer these three questions, if you are indeed a prophet. <coughs> and one of the questions was about the young man who disappeared in the cave. And now I'm answering the question for you. But while I'm answering this question to you, giving you the answer, you are so amazed about what I did at that time. أَمْ حَسِبْتَ أَنَّ أَصْحَابَ الْكَهْفِ وَالرَّكِيمِ كَانُوا مِنْ آيَاتِنَا عَجَبَ No, Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. This Qur'an that I'm now revealing to you, this is a bigger sign for me than that which happened in the cave to the young men. إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ No, sorry. أَمْ حَسِبْتَ أَنَّ أَصْحَابَ الْكَهْفِ وَالْرَكِيمِ رَكِيمِ رَكِيمِ كَانُوا مِنْ آيَاتِنَا عَجَبَ The young men disconnected from the world because the dunya left no door open for them to live as Muslims. When the young men disconnected from the world, which is the project of the Muslim village, the young men, when they left, what did they take with them? The most important thing to take with you, to preserve your faith, when you say goodbye to the godless world, is the book of Allah. So they took with them the Rakim. Rakim here, scripture. And then they went into the cave. إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ They were young men. آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ They had faith in Allah. وَزِدْنَاهُمْ هُدَى And we cause their faith to increase. Is our fitya to eat al kaf? Sorry, I, I, I did not go to number 10, I went to number 12. No. Is our, uh, is our fitya to eat al kaf? The young man took refuge in the cave. For Kalu. And then they prayed. Rabbana. آتِنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً Kindly, O Allah, bestow on us mercy from thyself. وَهَيِّئْ لَنَا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا رَشَدًا And endow us, now what translation did I make? And dispose of our affair in the right way. Number 10. This now indicates that the story of the young men and the cave 
forms part of the means for which you can protect yourself from Dajjal. And so when we meet next week, inshallah, we will now enter into the story of the young man and the cave. What was that story? Which if you can tell us the correct answer, then we the rabbis will recognize that you are indeed a true prophet of Allah. Now let us end as we began. That you should memorize this dua. Rabbana atina min ladunka rahma wa hayyih lana min amrina rashada. Number two. That you should memorize all ten. The first ten ayat of Surah Al-Kaf. Before this class ends, at the end of June, I ask of you, all of you, all, without exception, to memorize these ten ayat of Surah al kaf the first ten ayat. And finally, of course, you know to recite it every Yamul Juma. Don't say Friday. Eh? <laughs> recite it every Yamul Juma. And it'll give you nur until next Juma. And that nur will allow you to see with the internal eye. But he does see with only one eye. So you will see with two eyes. So then you'll be able to see if he can give you a six for an eye. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتبع علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين